Welcome to my classroom. In this video, I talk about a classical problem, water drug problem. I start with a simple case. Then a graph is used to solve the problem in a systematic way, and more observations are made for the general situation. A drug is full of water with the volume of 8 liter. Two empty drugs with capacities of 3 liter and 5 liter are given. There are no markings on each drug. How to divide the water into two equal parts by using these drugs only? What is the least number of steps to which the target? This problem can be solved simply by trial and error. You may pause the video and try on your own first so that you have a better idea about the problem. During your trial, I suppose you might come across the situation of going back to some previous state. Yet, we are asked to divide the water into two equal parts with the least number of steps. So, some of the steps in the trial might need to be removed. Let us denote the volumes of the water in the drugs by x, y, z, where the first number denotes the volume of the small drugs. The second numbers refer to the middle drugs, and the third numbers refer to the large drug. That is, then the solution can be represented by the following sequences. In the first sequence, it is done in 8 steps. For the second sequence, it is done in 7 steps. So, the problem is solved and the least number of steps is 7. The method trial and error is easy to start with, but it is not systematic and it is likely to get confused when bigger numbers are given. Let us restudy the problem with another approach. We try to visualize the way of pouring water between the drugs by a diagram. There are three variables x, y and z and they are related by x plus y plus z equals 8. In other words, there are two freedom of choices. Therefore, we can use a rectangular coordinate plane to describe the volumes of water in the drugs. Here is the diagram. Let me first explain how to interpret this diagram. The vertical axis represents the volume of water in the small drug. So it goes from 0 to 3. The horizontal axis represents the volume of water in the middle drug, so it goes from 0 to 5. As for the volume of water in the large drug, it is represented by Z, and it goes from 0 to 8. It is clear to read the data for X and Y. Due to the relation X plus Y plus Z equals 8, the value of Z can be obtained by calculation. It can also be obtained directly from the diagram. Let me show this with examples. When x equals 3 and y equals 5, it is represented by the upper right corner. Clearly, z equals 0. For z equals 1, there are two possible cases, 2, 5, 1 and 3, 4, 1. The first case is clear and the second case can be seen by the diagonal drawn from the point of x equals 3 and y equals 4. One more example. For z equals 4, the two possible cases are 0, 4, 4 and 3, 1, 4. Again, the value of z in the second case can be obtained similarly by the diagonal. You may pause the video to check your understanding of the diagram. Okay, when pouring water from one drug to another, there are three cases. 1. Between the small and middle drugs. The values of X and Y are changed, and Z remains unchanged. Such move is a diagonal between upper left and lower right. Note that the diagonal in the other direction, between upper right and lower left, is not allowed as the values of x, y, and z will be changed in the same move, which is not expected. 2. 
between the small and large drugs. The value of Y remains unchanged. Therefore, such move is represented by a vertical line or a diagonal line between the upper left and lower right. 3. Between the middle and large drugs. The value of X is unchanged, so the move is represented by a horizontal line or a diagonal line between upper left and lower right. Note that, since there are no markings on the drugs, when pouring water from one drug to another, the water in the first drug needs to be empty. Therefore, each move must end at the boundary of the rectangle. It is good for you to pause the video and take some time to fully understand the rule of move before going to the graphical solution. With the understanding of the diagram and the rule of the moves, the problem can be solved easily and systematically by the graphical solution. There are only two ways to start the pouring of water from the large drug, either pouring to the small drug or the middle drug. Let me demonstrate the moves in the diagram with these two cases. Case 1. Pouring water to the small drug in the first step. Step 1. The starting point is 008, that is, the lower left corner, going to the upper left corner, 305. Step 2. It seems that there are two choices. Choice 1. Going horizontally to the upper right corner, 350. Choice 2. Going diagonally to 035. Note that, for choice 1, the next step will be going down to 053, but these three steps can be combined and done by one step from 008 to 053. Therefore, the move going to the upper right corner 350 should be avoided to save the number of steps. In other words, we have the second choice only going to 035. Step 3. For the similar reason, going up vertically to 332. Step 4. Going diagonally to 152. Step 5. Going horizontally to 107. Step 6. Going diagonally to 017. Step 7. Going vertically to 314. Step 8 going diagonally to 044. Done. The water is equally divided into two parts, 4 liters in each of the middle and large jug. It seems that there are two ways to move in each step, but to use less steps, the corner points are avoided in the move. So, there is actually one choice left. Thus, the target is which systematically and X steps are used in this case. There are really two choices in the first step. To confirm the least number of steps, we need to check the second case. Case 2. Pouring water to the middle drug in the first step. So, seven steps are needed in this case. Therefore, the least number of steps of this problem is 7, by pouring water first from the large drug to the middle one. The problem can be generalized as follows. If the capacities of the three drugs are A liter, B liter, and A plus B liter, where A and B are positive integers, can the water in the large jug always be divided into two equal parts? What do you think? Pause the video and think about it. I suppose your answer is negative, right? To confirm a statement, a proof is need. To negate a statement, a count example is already enough. So we only need to give an example to show our conjecture. Suppose the capacities of the three drugs are 1 liter, 2 liter, and 3 liter. The volume of the water in the large jug is an odd number. To divide it equally into two parts, that is to get 1.5 liter of water from the three drugs. It is obviously impossible. That is, it is not always possible to divide the water into two equal parts. Then, for what values of A and B the answer is positive? 
we have seen from the current example that if A plus B is odd, that is, A and B are of different parity, then it is impossible to divide the water equally into two parts. Can we say that if A and B are of the same parity, that is, both of A and B are even, or both of them are odd, then the target is always reached? Again, the answer is negative. Let us consider another example that both A and B are even. Suppose the capacities of the three drugs are 4 liter, 6 liter, and 10 liter. That is, the initial state is 0010 and the target state is 055. Check this with the graph. Case 1. Pouring water to the small drug in step 1. Going from 0010 in 8 steps, the path ends at 064, the lower right corner. The next move is either back to the initial state 0010 or the upper right corner 460, which is not a favorable move as its next move is either 406 or 064, both of the previous states. That means the target state 055 cannot be reached in this case. Let us check the second case. Case 2. Pouring water to the middle jug in step 1. Going from 0010, again in 8 steps, the path ends at 406, the upper left corner. The reason is same as case 1, that the graph can only repeat the previous steps, and thus, the move has to stop and the target state 055 cannot be reached in this case as well. Therefore, it is impossible to divide the water into two equal parts for A equals 4 and B equals 6. In other words, A and B having the same parity does not guarantee the target to be reached. So, what should be the condition? We have drawn graphs for two examples. Let us observe the graphs and see if we can get any idea. For the possible case A equals 3 and B equals 5. For the impossible case A equals 4 and B equals 6. In the examples of A equals 3 and B equals 5, if we combine two graphs in the same diagram, all points on the boundary are touched except the upper right corner, that is z equals 0. In the next examples of a equals 4 and b equals 6, two graphs share the same pattern, just in opposite direction. All even points on the boundary are touched, again except the upper right corner. For the first example, the GCD of 3 and 5 is 1. For the second example, the GCD of 4 and 6 is 2. If we cancel the common factor 2 from A and B, that is, take A equals 2 and B equals 3, then the GCD is 1. The graph of A equals 2 and B equals 3 can be obtained by modifying the graph of the second example, that is, changing 2 to 1 and 4 to 2, etc then we see that all points on the boundary are touched except the upper right corner. When the GCD of A and B is 1, that is, A and B are relatively prime, all points on the boundary are touched except the upper right corner. If A plus B is even, half of the value is an integer, then this is a point on the boundary and it is the end point of the path, that means the water is equally divided into two parts. Otherwise, that is, a plus b is odd, half of the value is not an integer, then this is not an endpoint of the path, that is, the target cannot be reached. It is easy to see the graphs of the multiples of a and b share the same pattern of the graphs of a and b, and thus, the results apply similarly. You may choose some values of A and B, draw the graphs to verify this result. From our previous conclusion that when A and B are relatively prime, the graph passes through all integral points on the boundary 
except the upper right corner. It means that the water in the large jug can be divided into any integral volumes by the drugs. For example, in the initial problem, A equals 3 and B equals 5, we can divide the water in the large jug not only into two equal parts, 4 liter and 4 liter, but also any integral portions like 1 liter and 7 liter, 2 liter and 6 liter, 3 liter and 5 liter. In other words, the following statement is suggested. When A and B are relatively prime, the water in the large jug can be divided into any integral volumes. The second part of the problem is to find the least number of steps. In the solution, we draw the graphs of the two possible cases, compare and identify their answer. At least, it takes seven steps to reach the target by the drug with the capacity 3, 5, 8. In general, for the numbers A, B, A plus B, where A and B are relatively prime, what is the least number of steps? The answer is the least number of steps equals A plus B minus 1. You may verify the answer by other sets of numbers and the graphs and see if you can give a proof for both statements. The water drug problem is a famous and classical problem. It occurs in the movie Die Hard with a Vengeance. I came across the problem when I was a kid. I did it with a sequence by trial and error. The target was reached and the work was finished. Many years ago, I attended a seminar and the problem was solved by the graphical solution. I find it nice and interesting. The working can be visualized and done in a systematic way. I try to generalize the problem and pass the problem to a group of students for further exploration in the competition. Though we did not receive prize from the competition, I believe it was still a good learning experience to us. To figure out how the idea of one form is transformed into another, and how it works and caters all given conditions is a wonderful process of understanding. Observing pattern, looking for general case and solution are good habits and attitude for learning mathematics. I made this video to share the idea. For true understanding, you need to spend more time for digesting, thinking and exploring, which you share the joy.